Hey everyone, it's Lisa from the blog farmhousehomeboon.com and today I'm going to be making another what we eat in a week video, dinner or lunch edition. Before I dive into what we ate, I wanted to jump on here really quickly because the farm that I get some beef and eggs from locally, the one that I did the beef unboxing a few months ago on, they reached out to me and said that they now offer home delivery. And so they're doing this right now during all of this madness. So if you're having trouble getting local sources or getting sources at all of beef and eggs, you can now order grass-fed beef. They sent me several cuts here. This is their best of beef box. And they just rolled out where they ship eggs. So if you're having a hard time finding eggs or finding good local eggs, they finally figured out a way with the design that they can ship these. So they come with this extra cushion because that was a bit of a challenge, but now you can order eggs as well. So I will leave a link down in the description box below. It's fed from the farm and now they'll deliver. So if you are having trouble finding sources, you can check them out. I love sharing these kind of videos with you where once a day for an entire week, I share what we are eating. They are completely unscripted and I'm just making what we make. Lots of repeats beginning to happen because I make these kind of videos a lot, but I do tend to fall back on the same kind of meals really often. So let's dive into it. Night one, we did cheeseburger soup. I am trying to go to the grocery store a whole lot less right now, especially during this time. And so I was at the very end of the food in the refrigerator at this point of the week, whenever I started making this video. And so cheeseburger soup is almost always something I can make. I usually have some kind of bone broth going. This time I used some beef bones that we had from the half of a cow we ordered a while back. And I always have frozen ground either beef or pork or deer meat in the fridge, and then whatever vegetable, carrots, onions, garlic, celery, green beans, corn, all good choices. So that is a meal that is perfect whenever you're starting to really run low on food, and that is what we made. We also like to top it with cheese. If there's sour cream in the fridge, we like to use that as well, or Greek yogurt, and that also helps cool it down for the kids. Add lots of herbs and salt and pepper, and it tastes delicious. Night two, we did a crustless quiche, so at this point, I still hadn't gone to the grocery store. Quiche is another meal that we always have all of the ingredients on hand for. We have our chickens in the backyard. So I just scramble up some eggs with some milk. You can even use water if you are completely out of milk, cream, whatever dairy thing you have on hand or even a dairy substitute, and then whatever vegetables and meat you have. Now I do love making einkorn pie crust for my quiche and I do it pretty often but only whenever I have extra time because it does make the kitchen a mess to roll out pie dough and it's just an added step. So I didn't do it tonight. If you do want my einkorn pie crust recipe, I have it on the blog and I'll link it down in the description box below, but it is the one that I use every time that I'm throwing together a pie crust, whether it be for pie or quiche. I also use cheese. Again, for a quiche, any cheese you have on hand works. So if you have Parmesan or cheddar, even feta, or a soft cheese, like a goat cheese, it's perfect for this. So it's a good meal to whip out during quarantine if you don't have a lot of things on hand. Any vegetable, any meat, any cheese, lots of eggs, salt, herbs, and you have a dinner really quickly. Day three, I did pork chops and rice. We have a freezer full of meat. It's one thing that we always have, even if I haven't been to the grocery store, Rice is when you're really getting low on things. And then I had half of a bag of green beans in my freezer and no other vegetables anywhere. So this is the last day before I ended up going to the grocery store, but I cooked my pork chops in some reserved bacon grease from the night that I made quiche, which I love to use my bacon grease. I never throw it out, especially when it comes from a local farm and it makes pork chops taste so much better. Now this particular night, I didn't have a lot of time. We needed to get dinner on the table really quickly. So I just browned them on both sides, all the pork chops. Then I cut it off the bone and diced it into cubes, which this is not the most presentable way to make pork chops. You're not gonna win any awards for presentation, but it's a great way for kids to enjoy it and it's easy to serve it. So I put the chopped up pork chops back in with the bacon grease, some onions and garlic and salt and pepper, 
and then I just cooked it the rest of the way. That way I can just dish it out onto the kids' plates. It's already cut, nobody needs it to be cut. And I served it with rice that I cooked in bone broth and some steamed green beans. Also, always sauerkraut on the side because it's easy to just pull out of the fridge and I always have it on hand. Day four, I did end up doing a major grocery haul. This is a meal that we do even if we're really busy and we're out and about and we want something fast, this is our fast food. So I will get deli meat, cheese, any kind, fruit, sometimes prepared hummus or guacamole or salsa, some organic tortilla chips. We just throw it all together and call it lunch. You could eat it however you want. Some kids take a little cheese, some like chips and guacamole best, but it's a really easy meal, especially if you're out and about in the spring or summer and you need something really quick, we'll run into the grocery store and grab those items. Another thing that's really good to add to that, if you are at a grocery store that has a rotisserie chicken, that's really great. I was just going to Aldi on that day, so they don't sell rotisserie chicken, but we were able to all get full and it was a nice, easy meal on the go, even though we weren't really on the go at all. I just was being lazy and I was at the grocery store, so it made sense to do. Day five, I did a risotto. Now, this is not something I make a lot at all, but I was listening to a podcast they were talking about risotto and it just made me really want it. In fact, since they were talking about that, I've made it two or three times because it's so good. So what I did was I sauteed up some rice in butter. That's always a really good first step. Anytime you're making rice, it just adds a lot of flavor. I added onions and bone broth and simmered that until it absorbed all the liquid. In a separate cast iron skillet, I sauteed some sliced mushrooms in butter and then I added it back to the rice with some salt and chicken. And then I also like to grate up some fresh Parmesan cheese and just mix it all together. It is so good. So I had plenty of groceries on hand, but I still made risotto because it was just so good. I also, before all of this, I roasted a whole chicken. And now when I do that, we always have half of a chicken still left because we don't eat a whole chicken in a meal. So I reserved that for a meal later in the week. Day six, we did potato soup. This is because after I made the risotto and took all of the chicken off the bones, I put the bones into some water in my Instant Pot and made bone broth. For potato soup, I just chop up some potatoes and onions and garlic, add it to broth, simmer it, and then serve it with sour cream and cheese. Now, this time I did not have sour cream, so we just used cheese. Also, I topped it with avocados. That is one of our favorite toppings. Some more things that we really like are crushed red pepper flakes on top. Of course, bacon is a go-to. Normally, I will hit the soup with my immersion blender and blend it up a little bit, but we were just in a hurry, and so we just ate it how it was. Everybody likes it. The kids don't pick around the onions because they're nice and soft. It had been simmering for several hours at this point, and I like how they're able to get a whole lot of bone broth in there. Night seven, chicken pot pie. Now, that is something that I make all the time. It's a sourdough biscuit recipe with chicken pot pie. I have it on my blog. It's one of my most popular recipes. It is a go-to. It definitely takes a little bit of extra effort, so it's not one of those meals you're gonna make on a night where you have tons of things going on, but if you're home, you have a few hours to prepare, not even hours, but one hour to prepare your dinner. It's a good thing to make and everybody really likes it. Normally my chicken pot pie does have peas and not corn, but I opened the freezer and remembered that the grocery stores were completely out of peas. So I just put corn in instead. Obviously you can omit that, you can add celery, really any vegetables with chicken and a broth and cream sauce just tastes amazing. You really can't go wrong with the chicken pot pie recipe. We find ourselves making it again and again. We really love it. Right, well, I hope that you enjoyed these recipes this week. Stay tuned, I plan to do more of these videos and document to hopefully give some inspiration on what you can cook. Also, it'll change. Now that spring is here, there's going to be a lot more freshness, a lot less soups, and some more of those spring and summer meals that I can't wait to share with you and enjoy with my family. All right, well, thank you so much for watching this video. If you are brand new to my channel, please hit that subscribe button. I make two new videos every week on food from scratch, natural living, and a handmade home. Thank you so much for stopping by the farmhouse.